In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Spiritual Meanings and Contemplation of Incense 14. The first lesson we learn from incense is the Lord's teaching. He who loses his life for my sake will find it. Matt. 10. 39. An example of this is the particle of incense, which burns and burns until it becomes perfumed pillars of smoke. You look for it in the censer as a particle of incense, but you do not find it because it offered itself as a burnt offering to God. Burnt offerings are not only of sacrifices but also of incense, which the Holy Bible considers as a sacrifice to be offered on the altar of incense. Incense teaches us a great lesson. How beautiful it is when a man offers himself as a burnt offering to the Lord. Every offering is outside the self but the offering of the self is the greatest offering. Offering the self is represented by putting the particle of incense in the fire. It is said that our God is a consuming fire. Dude. 4. 24. The saints were particles of incense put into the divine censer and were burnt by the love of God. 15. The second lesson in incense is its constant ascent. The burning incense does not accept to be kept down, but it rises to the sky, stretches and spreads and never ceases to ascend and spread. When you watch and follow it you cannot help raising your eyes to the sky whether you wish to or not. That is why incense always attracts people's senses to above as if it is an arrow pointing continually to heaven. 16. A third lesson in incense is that it resembles the sweet aroma. The Holy Bible conditions incense to be sweet incense. Whoever smells the incense remembers that man's life should be a fragrant perfume before God. The Holy Bible says, for we are to God the fragrance of Christ through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. 2 Cor. 2. 15 14. 17. One of the most magnificent contemplation of incense is that it reminds us of the cloud or the dark cloud in which the Lord appeared. The Lord says, I will appear in the cloud above the mercy seat. Lev. 16. 2. It is also written in the book of Leviticus. Cloud of incense. Lev. 16. 13. It was said about Aaron the chief priest. Then he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from the altar before the Lord, with his hands full of sweet incense beaten fine, and bring it inside the veil. And he shall put the incense on the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of incense may cover the mercy seat that is on the testimony, lest he die, Lev. 16. 12. 13. In directing his people in the Old Testament, whether in the tabernacle or in the sanctuary or in the wilderness of Sinai, God appeared in the cloud or in the smoke. His guidance to the people in Sinai was in the form of an overshadowing cloud. During the day, representing God who was overshadowing them. If the cloud moved, they knew that God was moving them so they moved. If the cloud settled, they settled. Num. 9. 17. Thus, it is written. And the cloud of the Lord was above them by day when they went out from the camp. Num. 10. 34. 18. When the Lord Jesus Christ came to Egypt it is said that he came on a cloud, is. 19. 1. The cloud was a symbol of the Virgin. It was an ascending fragrant incense. In Christ's second coming, he will also come on the clouds. Matt. 24. 30. So, clouds represent the presence of the Lord in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. 19. The incident of the transfiguration is an example of God's presence in clouds. It is written that while the Lord Jesus Christ was talking to the three disciples, the cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were fearful as they entered the cloud. Then a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son. Hear him. LK. 9. 34-35. 20. The Lord talked to Moses from a cloud. When the Lord spoke to Moses, the Holy Bible says, Then Moses went up into the mountain, and a cloud covered the mountain. Now the glory of the Lord rested on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. X. 24. 15. 16. 
The same happened when the Lord spoke to the people of Israel from the tabernacle. The cloud and smoke were overshadowing the tabernacle. 21. We see the same again in the consecration of Solomon's temple. The Holy Bible says, And it came to pass, when the priests came out of the holy place, that the cloud filled the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not continue ministering because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Then Solomon spoke. The Lord said he would dwell in the dark cloud 1 Kin 8, 10 to 12. 22. Incense represents clouds or dark clouds reminding us of God's presence and the glory of God. It is written. Clouds and darkness surround him. P.S. 97. 2. Therefore, incense has numerous spiritual meanings for whoever wishes to benefit from it. It is a form of worship in itself. It was not connected with the Old Testament sacrifices thus not necessitating its termination with that of those sacrifices. 23. Lastly, we say that there is not one single verse in the New Testament commanding the cancellation of incense. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Rev. 2. 7. 5. Lights and candles. The Orthodox Church is characterized by its lights. We use candles in our prayers, during the Bible reading, in front of the icons of the saints, on the altar, in the sanctuary in general, and in front of the altar on its eastern side, and the church remains lighted constantly. Our brethren the Protestants do not use any of these rites despite their symbolic significance. In this brief article we will discuss the subject of lights in the church, the reason for using them and the spiritual meanings they carry. 1. The church itself is called in the Holy Bible the Golden Lampstand. This is clear from the book of Revelation. St. John. The visionary saw the Lord Jesus Christ in the midst of seven golden lampstands and the Lord said to him, The seven lampstands which you saw are the seven churches. Rev. 1. 20. 2. The church resembles heaven because it is the house of God, or God's dwelling place. This is nearly the expression used about the first house of God. Jacob the patriarch said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Gen. 28. 17. Since the church resembles heaven, it must have lights to illuminate it like the stars of heaven. 3. The lights in the church may represent the angels in heaven or the angels whom Jacob saw in his vision ascending and descending the ladder in Bethel, house of God. Gen. 28. 12. The lights symbolize the angels because the angels are also called angels of light. 2 Cor. 11. 14. 4. The lights of the church also symbolize the saints, to whom the Lord says, Let your light so shine before men that. 5. 16. On this occasion the Lord likens the saints to lighted lamps put on. Lampstands, Matt. 5. 15. Also, the Holy Bible says, The righteous will shine forth as the sun, in the kingdom of their father, Matt. 13. 43. And the Lord Jesus Christ said to the Jews about John the Baptist, As an example of those righteous, he was the burning and shining lamp, and you were willing for a time to rejoice in his light, John 5, 35. Since the church is full of angels and saints, then it ought to be full of lights. 5. Primarily the church ought to be filled with lights because of God's presence in it. God is light, John 1, 5. And the Lord Jesus Christ says of himself, I am the light of the world, John 8, 12. 6. The church is lighted by lights after the pattern of the tabernacle and the sanctuary. They were full of lights and their lamps were never put out. The Lord commanded that the lamps be lighted by pure olive oil under the supervision of Aaron and his children as an everlasting statute. The Lord says, And you shall command the children of Israel that they bring you pure oil of pressed olives for the light to cause the lamp to burn continually in the tabernacle of meeting outside the veil which is before the testimony Aaron and his sons shall tend it from evening until morning before the Lord it shall be a statute 
forever to their generations. X. 27. 2021. This is a divine command given by God who said on the first day of creation, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. Gen. 1. 3. 4. 7. The lamps, which are lighted by oil, have a spiritual meaning. The oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit, it was used for anointing. After which the Spirit of the Lord descended. When Samuel anointed David, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him in power. 1 Sam. 16. 13. The Holy Bible also tells us about the anointing. From the Holy One, 1 John. 2. 2027. 20, Even the candles which we light in church are made of oil, and the lamps in church are lighted by oil for the same symbolic significance. 8. We notice that the Lord commanded that lampstands be made in His house, whether the tabernacle or the sanctuary. The lamps and the lampstands were made of pure gold. X. 25. 31. X. 37. 17. 2 CHR. 4. 20. All these are proof of God's concern about the existence of lights in his house. 9. The lamps were lighted continually upon God's command. Extinguishing the lamps lighter negligence and lighting them were considered as treachery to the Lord and deserve severe punishment. Concerning this, the Holy Bible says, For our fathers have trespassed and done evil in the eyes of the Lord our God. They have forsaken him, have turned their faces away from the habitation of the Lord, and turned their backs on him. They have also shut up the doors of the vestibule, put out the lamps, and have not burned incense. Therefore the wrath of the Lord fell upon Judah and Jerusalem, and he has given them up to trouble, to astonishment, to CHR. 29. 6 8. All these show us how God cares for lights in his house. 10. Lighting lamps has a special profound spiritual meaning. It symbolizes constant readiness, perpetual watchfulness and preservation of the work of the Holy Spirit in the heart. Concerning this readiness, the Lord Jesus Christ tells us, Let your ways be girded and your lamps burning, and yourselves be like men who wait for their master, when he will return from the wedding, that when he comes and knocks, they may open to him immediately. Blessed are those servants. Then the master, when he comes, will find watching LK. 12. 35. The Lord Jesus Christ gives us the parable of the five wise virgins. These lamps were burning whilst the lamps of the five foolish virgins went out. Matt. 25. 1-12. The oil of the lamps symbolizes the work of the Holy Spirit in the heart. The constant burning symbolizes the constant watchfulness in keeping the heart tied to the work of the Holy Spirit within it. 11. What is said about individuals can also be said about the whole church. When people see the lights in church they are reminded of their duties in preserving the light inside them and that their lamps should be lighted continually. They remember that the church is one of the five wise virgins who kept their lamps lighted. 12. With regard to lighting candles during the gospel reading. This is undoubtedly better than reading the gospel without light. It reminds us of the verse. Your word is a lamp to my feet and the light to my path. P.S. 119. And also the commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. P.S. 19. 13. The early church, ever since the apostolic year, has given importance to lights and their symbols. The book of Acts tells us about the upper room from which St. Paul was preaching after the breaking of the bread. There were many lamps where they were gathered. Acts 20. 8. 14. The candles that we light before the saints' icons remind us that the saints were lights in their generations. They were like candles, melting in order that their light might shine before people.